Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Monday, October 16th, 2023. Well, we've got quite a, quite a morning setting up here today. First off, we had Asian markets last night were down across the board, feeling, well, just a little bit uncertain overnight and then we have European markets this morning mostly lower only the FTSE holding a little tiny gain of 0.34 percent we also have oil oil futures are unchanged in there we've got Brent crude holding above $90 a barrel so we'll want to keep a pretty close eye on that today as well remember we are beginning the fourth quarter we started our fourth quarter earnings season and we're likely going to kick off with lots of volatility here uh, during this week so what does that mean for today well how about we settle in let's buckle up Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Before we take a look at the charts, there's a couple of items that I want to bring up to everyone. First off, tomorrow night, Tuesday evening, in the Hit and Run Candlesticks free trading room, I'm going to be doing e-learning uh, tomorrow night. And I would like to encourage everyone who has a chance to come over to that e-learning. I'm going to be talking about something that's pretty near and dear to my heart. As you guys know, I do an awful lot of individual coaching, helping people around the country and, and, and other places in the world improve their trading. And there's a lot of frustration in the market right now, a lot of folks that are struggling. And we're going to talk about some concepts, simplifying your trading. And that's really going to lead into a class that I'm going to be teaching on Thursday afternoon. It's called the 3-8 Trap Class. It's a strategy class, but honestly, what it really is is a business plan um, on how to trade this strategy that has made my career now I'm not saying it's the perfect strategy I'm not saying that it's the right strategy for you but if you are struggling in this market if you're finding some issues there in your trading and would like to improve I'd really like to encourage you to be there Tuesday evening 8 p.m. Eastern go to the hit and run candlesticks room it's free we'll talk about it we'll see if this might be right for you we do have a few spaces available um, I will leave a description below the title of the video here today for that class if you want to sign up for it that's going to happen Thursday make sure you prepare your time this is this isn't just a 45 minute quick and dirty um, you know cherry pick stocks this is actually I throw open my entire trade book and I give you everything I've got, the rules, the guidelines, everything I follow to make this strategy work. And you'll probably, if I could ask folks that have already taken this class, if you could comment in the comments below to let folks know that it's worked for you, I would truly, truly appreciate it. So look forward to seeing you Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern, and then hopefully in the 3-8 trap class on Thursday. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, first off, one of the things that we have really been noticing over and over and over, like I mentioned, Asia markets were down, European markets are mostly lower this morning, and we've seen this repeatedly over and over and over the last few days. And that is we pop in the pre-market. For some reason, we can't get it done during the day. But overnight, institutions are able to pump this up and get everyone trying to jump in and then they sell it off during the day and we've done that ever all week last week we pop in the pre-market and we go nowhere so one of the things we need to first recognize is that we have some resistance levels in this chart and we should be careful just chasing or rushing directly into this market because one of these days we could stumble and take out the lows so 
having said that, let's take a look at what we got going on here in the diamonds. One of the good news items here in the diamonds is we have a bullish pattern starting to show up. There's that little shoulder right there ahead and a possible shoulder. We did break this downtrend here and we are pressing this resistance, which we just haven't been able to get through in the chart. So we're trying to gap up again this morning. We're trying to pump it up into the pre-market report but I want to caution you to be careful and remember that more than 95% of the companies right now are in their blackout period. They are not able to buy their stock back. They're not able to talk or do much of anything at all because we're moving into earnings. Now, some of those companies start coming out of that blackout period on Friday. So look for a lot of volatility as we move through. And remember today, there's not a whole lot of data to get too excited about in really firing up the market. So just be careful, this could be just another pop, another choppy day as we wait for those earnings to kick up and provide that inspiration. So that said, if the bulls can remain inspired today, let's look for a retest of this resistance up here to see if we can pop through. And if we can pop through there, then we'll start stretching on up and seeing if we can test these levels higher. If the bears happen to find inspiration today, and there is reason for that, we've got bonds going up this morning. So keep an eye on that. If those bond yields continue to go up, it pressures the market. You'll wanna watch that carefully and see if we retest these lows. Now there is a little bit of a price support level right in here. So if the bears get going, maybe they can push down into there and still hold. That would still be overall in a bullish pattern, a possible higher low coming in the diamonds. If that were to break, however, watch that level down here. Then if we take a look at our moving averages here in the chart, you can see we've been struggling with that 200 day moving average. You'll notice that our 34 EMA, our 220 day moving average, all pushing down to kind of put a lid here on that chart. So we need some inspiration from something to get us moving. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data today to really provide that big boost of energy to the upside. So just be kind of careful here. Um, on the day. Let's take a look at our SPY. Now, the SPY has been stronger um, just based on the big tech giants. Seven big tech giants are doing pretty darn good in the market. They struggled on Friday, but the um, SPY and the QQQ benefit the most from that. And you can see in here, we've got that same pattern, that little bit of an inverted head and shoulders pattern with a neckline that would be right in here. And the SPY has pushed up strongly here in the market pushing up into this big resistance area and you can see the last couple of days we've pulled back on that so if the bulls you can see we're trying to gap up this morning if the bulls can find inspiration hold this price support right in here then maybe we push back up and we start testing some of these resistance levels in the chart and maybe even push back on through to test this level up here once again you will want to keep in mind we're still overall in a downtrend, but this might put in a higher low if the bulls can push through here on that chart. Now let's take a look at our, um, if the bears come in and push, if they come in and push and find inspiration today, we'll want to watch this level right here. A break of that little support would likely push us back down into this level of price support in the chart. It doesn't mean everything the world's coming to an end, but it would certainly raise a little bit of fear in the market if that were to occur. Um, let's take a look at our moving averages. We're struggling right in here with our 34 EMA. We can't quite break through that and we're still dealing with this major area of price resistance in the chart. And just keep in mind, we've got the 50 day moving average above that has been coming down that could also help provide that lid for that upside move in the chart. Let's take a look at our QQQ. Boy, the Magnificent Seven has done quite a job here recently, and they've been able to lift the market pretty much all on their own. But you can see what happened here in the chart on Thursday and Friday. We ran up here, we tested this significant level of price resistance, we tested this downtrend, and then we turned around from that resistance, breaking through a little bit of price support here in the chart. 
and pushing on lower. Now the question for today is if we were to find some bullish inspiration, will we push back up here, retest this little resistance area and then push on through to the major resistance up here? That is certainly possible the way the market has been acting, particularly if the big tech giants can get going. I will tell you, however, with Hong Kong having sold off last night, um, an Asian market selling off, we might still see a little bit of weakness. And we do have to remember that the tech giants can't buy back their own stock right now. So we'll be looking for some inspiration here, maybe toward the end of the week. And remember, we're gonna be coming into the big group tech reports later on um, in earnings. But for now, we may end up with a little bit of a resting pattern here um, to be watching for. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration, it's gonna be critical that they hold this level of price support because if they don't hold that, about the only place we can go is right back down here to retest these lows that uh, we struggled with before the August low. So watch that closely here in the chart. Now, keeping in mind the other thing that was a little bit, um, raising a little bit of fear on Friday is that the we dropped back below our 50 day moving average. So we crossed above. Remember, this is very, very critical. When you come up out of a bottom, we cross above a moving average, we need to make a higher low. We need to prove that we can hold those levels. So pushing down here on Friday raised a little bit of concern. It raised some fear in the market, but all is not lost. If we can find that bullish energy to push us back up and hold on to that level, that's gonna be very, very critical here in the market. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, IWM is the most bearish of the market and continues to be very concerning here overall. As you can see, we had rallied up pretty strongly here with the rest of the market, but without the big tech giants in it, there's not much love here. And you can see pulled all the way back and on Friday, we ended up testing this low down here. Now, there is some hope in this because this can create that W bottom formation. If we can bounce right back up off of this, start pushing higher, we could create that W formation in the chart and a little bit of bullishness. But we still need to put in that higher low here in the chart. So let's be a little bit careful here. If the bulls can push through, we'll want to look to see if they can recover this downtrend that they lost and maybe even push up into this resistance area in the chart. But remember, we need to see that higher low before we can hold any confidence that we're going to push on higher here in IWM. If the bears find inspiration today, well, this could be critical. If the bears find that inspiration and we drop down below this level, just keep in mind, we could drop pretty hard to find that next level of price support if we fail here in the chart. There is a little bit of intermediary support Notice that we've stripped below this level a couple of times and then um, stripped out stop losses and bounced back up. So it's possible we could catch in there first for a little bounce to the upside. Watch that carefully. And our moving averages here, well, they're pretty abysmal. As you can see, our 50-day moving average has crossed down through the 200-day moving average. We call that the death cross. Our 34, our 20, our eight exponential moving averages are all still heading lower. So IWM remains very, very weak here in the market as we complete this big head and shoulders pattern in this chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX on Friday spiked back up. Now, there's good news and there's bad news here in the chart. The, bad, the good news is we didn't break out of this resistance. Notice we retested the high over here that we made the other day. Didn't didn't pop through there and hold that area in the chart. So there's your good news. The bad news is we held this price support and we have created a possible upside trend here in the VIX. So fear really creeped up here on Friday. Although we're getting some bullishness in the market, in the pre-market today, watch that carefully. This will probably pull back first thing. But if we've seen what we've seen lately here with the price action, we get that pop and then we just kind of fade the rest of the day. So watch that carefully if that bounces back up in that area. Where this could really get ugly is if the fear were to spike and we were to bounce above this area and hold, 
that's where things can get really ugly really fast in the market. I'm not saying that's going to occur. I'm saying just be aware of that fact and we should be paying close attention to how the market reacts to this data um, over the rest of this week. Let's take a look at our um, T2122. Now if there is some good news here from what happened on Friday is T2122, we pulled back substantially. We came back into that bearish reversal zone. This is actually the bearish reversal zone down in here. Um, we came back near that and then we caught a little tiny bit of a bounce on Friday. So watch that carefully in here. What that says, remember T2122 is just a four week new high, new low ratio. It doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go, but it does tell us when we've reached those pressure points in the market where we can expect some kind of a reversal. So we're down here in that region where we might catch that little bit of relief reversal back to the upside. And we've got that bullishness in the pre-market kind of suggesting that be the case. The fact is that we have Asian markets and European markets not looking so good. We also want to consider that possibility that we can pop and drop. And that possibility means that we still have an open space to move down in this chart in T2122. If the bulls continue this inspiration this morning, we've certainly opened a pretty substantial upside opportunity. But watch for that volatility and watch for these whipsaws. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people when I'm working with them and coaching have been struggling a lot because no matter what you buy, there hasn't been able to get much for follow through. A lot of whipsaw price action in here challenging um, traders um, at every turn. So watch that carefully. Our uh, T2108, T2108 kind of flat on Friday. It didn't break down, which was good. Kind of held this price support area here in the chart. So although we were pulling back, it was really the big tech giants that were pulling back. Everything else just kind of held its own, kind of hung in there. So 24, 25% of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. It's not exactly bullish, but the good news is that we've held some support. We've certainly got plenty of resistance above to challenge us as we start moving up. So it all depends on who finds that inspiration today, bullish or bearish. If we're going to be able to bounce up in here and start testing some of these next resistance areas, or we break that support pushing on lower. Watch that one carefully. Carefully. Our T2107, well, it just wasn't impressed at all on Friday. But the good news is, is we didn't break the low. So as we were pulling back in here on T2107, it didn't break that low, which gives us that hope. And you can see there's a little bit of a hockey stick right there in that chart showing that possibility that we could catch a little higher low support in here and bounce. What we will want to be watching if that is the case is that we've got plenty of resistance levels above to challenge us. So watch that carefully in the chart. About 34% of the stocks above their 200 day doesn't make for a bullish market, but it also it does tell us that we're a bit on the oversold side here and a bounce is possible. Remember, we are still in a downtrend here on T2107. T2101 really is showing us our problem. What we're not able to seem to do is find the momentum to follow through when we get the bulls engaged. The bulls haven't been able to engage and recently even the bears haven't been able to gauge, engage on the sell side. And so what we've seen here is an awful lot of choppiness here in the chart. Now that being said, we need to be breaking this trend right here. We need to see on a bullish wave, we need to see that that pushes on up and we wanna see that breadth of the market expanding. Just take this indicator for breadth and change that for momentum. And you can see we have had very little momentum in this market. It's just whipsaws, chops, reversals, all kinds of frustrating price action. So, I don't expect that to change 
necessarily today. Maybe later this week, we might get enough information and get the market going, but be very, very careful and expect more challenging price action throughout the day. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar does have a few things that we'll wanna be paying attention to, but it's overall a rather light economic calendar. As you can see, we've got Empire State Manufacturing numbers that will be coming out this morning. We're gonna have a couple of Fed speakers, Hawker, uh, well, one Fed speaker twice. Hawker will be talking today and a couple of bill auctions. So not a lot of information here to get Monday going with a, a, a great start. You'll notice here that the Empire State Manufacturing, the consensus is suggesting a negative five, which is um, a, a, a decline from the 1.9 prior. So we're going in the wrong direction there on, on manufacturing if that number comes out that way. Watch that close. Now, as we move through the week, we have some pretty good data points that can move us around. Tomorrow, we've got retail sales and industrial production. Those are big numbers. Um, we've got just a slew of Fed conversation here today, this week. We've got Bauman and Barkin speaking here. You'll notice over here, we've got housing, it starts and permits, petroleum status, of course our mortgage applications, and then a slew of Fed speakers. We're going to be looking at, um, on Thursday, jobless claims in the Philly Fed, existing home sales, and if you'll look right down here, Jerome Powell's going to be speaking on Thursday and then just more fed speak on friday so kind of keep that in mind um, a lot of what's going on is we're going to be focusing however on um, what happens here in these earnings reports coming up so let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today which is very very light not a whole lot going on here that are notable schw i put on the notable list obviously this is a very notable stock and unfortunately it is not in a good price pattern here heading into the earnings report. Watch this carefully here this morning. I'm doing this video before this earnings event has occurred, so watch that carefully. We've got a lot of resistance. This is actually in a potential short pattern here on Schwab going into this earnings report, so watch that carefully here today. And then if we take a look, one other that I put on the list today, ELS as a notable, also been moving in a downtrend but a real strong rally here recently right back to resistance so this could be a critical uh, report today to decide whether or not we're going to pop through that uh, downtrend or if we're going to continue moving on lower here from resistance watch that one carefully and that's that's it for the notables today and that was it for the economic calendar so you can see there's not a lot for the market to go on here today except hope of what um, those future earnings might be and with the israeli conflict kind of expanding with the situation in ukraine getting worse it looks like we've got a lot of geopolitical issues out there also that we're we're facing that um, continue to create those issues we can just have one headline come out in the news that could change everything so make sure you're prepared and ready for that volatility that this week is likely going to provide us let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you could do me this quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful if you could do me that favor and that would be click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to, go, to grow. Remember, it's the engagement with the channel that makes the biggest difference. So for everyone who watches the video, if you leave even an emoji for a comment, that helps an awful lot. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly appreciate it. That supports the effort of putting these out every day. Also, thank you so much to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link just below the title of the video. You guys can find that link. Thank you so much. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. 
let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you need to do your own due diligence make sure you're being very very focused about the events the market condition and the stock all of these stock placements don't ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas make sure it fits your risk tolerance and your trading rules so first off I want to point out a couple things that I think are pretty interesting take a look at UUP now I've mentioned this multiple times and that dollar by golly that dollar continues to be strong and we see those bonds going up again this morning that's going to continue to pressure this market but I think we might be reaching a point we'll want to watch this closely we might be reaching a point where we could see those bond yields go into a short squeeze and we'll talk about that in just a second and one of the things we want to be watching right here is that little hint that little possibility <clears throat> that we could have created a lower high here in UUP this is not ready for prime time yet but watch that closely if we start to see the fall uh, fall in the dollar if we start seeing bond um, uh, bond yields decline sharply we could have a big change here in the market so just keep a close eye on that and you may you might want to take a look at UDN UDN is the inverse on the dollar so you can see this has been moving in this downtrend there's that possibility that we could create a little higher low if you don't want to trade UUP short you can pick up UDN for that upside opportunity and see if we can start breaking that downtrend and moving to the upside again not ready for prime time something you want to be watching on and with that in mind let's take a look at TLT TLT the long bonds continue to be a major problem here for the market what we have started to see here just recently is a softening of that this again is not ready for uh, that prime time trade but I would be watching this pretty closely I think there's a chance that we could see when this starts to change when this starts to go I think there's a chance we could see a pretty substantial um, short squeeze happen here in bonds as everyone unloads um, from those huge short trades some of these institutions are basically max short on bonds when they start coming off of this they're going to come off in a big way and if you'll notice here if I go clear back here in time on TLT you can see the reason that I think we might be approaching the end of this big bond sell-off so watch that closely here if that starts to occur be prepared be ready to take action on a trade there let's take a look um, by the way if that fits your trading style and fits your um, rules let's take a look at a few charts that could be setting up take a look at CRM um, looked at this um, here earlier this week we, we've got a potential lower high in here but one of the reasons I marked this chart up notice we've got this price support in here as well and we pushed up it is entirely possible this could create a higher low in here start moving back to the upside now that doesn't mean it's just going to rip all the way back to the top as a matter of fact i would place this downtrend in here and, and say that there's a chance that we could pop up in here into that level but probably i wouldn't be um, making the bet that this thing is just going to rip all the way back up but a nice little rally back up into here would be a nice relief in that chart so watch CRM for that possibility take a look at WRK WRK holding in there nicely pressing this resistance level oops I didn't mean to move that pressing this resistance level in the chart I placed the price alert up here just to keep an eye on this obviously this has been moving up strongly here and if we can hold right in this area I would look for that next opportunity to the upside WRK is trying trying to move up in that chart I've been watching Intel and Intel got caught up in the tech selling yesterday and or on Friday and pulled back we've been struggling with this area of the chart for some period of time so I cannot say it's going to hold this upside trend it could be just this is the time that we completely fail here in Intel 
but with all of the tech support that we've been seeing here lately, all of the love in the tech side sector, I would watch if this, to see if this can hold and maybe stay range bound in here for a little bit. This is gonna report on the 26th and any time in here, this could pop out with just that anticipation of earnings coming in on the 26th. So keep an eye on Intel. I would be remiss if I said anything and about stocks and didn't mention what's going on in the oil sector. Take a look at XLE. XLE just ripping back to the upside uh, with the uncertainty in the Middle East. You can see we still have this downtrend that we have to deal with here in the chart. But the good news is, is we held that higher low, and we pushed on through. So this is our current uptrend right here in the chart. May require a little bit of rest or consolidation in here, but watch carefully if that starts breaking out. And there are um, quite a few stocks in that sector that are doing, or in the XLE ETF that are doing well. Take a look at some of these stocks. MRO, breaking through this resistance, just ripping back to the upside. Any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity. And we can go through this list, a lot of these breaking these downtrends, pushing up any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity and there are a lot to look at here um, that could be um, really productive fang look at that thing just ripping to the upside here so any pullback any consolidation sets up an opportunity there in some of these oil sector stocks keep a close eye on that um, Keep an eye on WBA. I've mentioned this one multiple times, WBA. Moving up in this pattern, notice we pulled back here on Friday, but that's not a problem. As long as we can hold that trend and higher low, I'd be looking for that next opportunity to the upside in WBA if, if it can. Keep an eye on some of the um, uh, pay systems out there. Had a nice little rally back recently here in Visa. Now clearly there's a lot of resistance right here in the chart it has to deal with. So don't be surprised if this has to pull back or consolidate a little bit. But I'd start watching those closely. Visa, MasterCard, those kind of stocks trying to hold up here in the market. Um, Keep, a, keep an eye on those. You might also want to keep an eye on um, some of these insurance companies. Um, oh my goodness, Aflac, just ripping to the upside here. They've been doing really, really well. Keep an eye on some of these uh, travelers. Um, trying to come up out of this bottom. Notice we have this base in here. Been moving in a major, major downtrend. But this is a nice little W formation starting to happen. If that can pop through that downtrend and hold, might be some nice opportunities there um, in travelers. So keep a close eye on some of those insurance companies. I just noticed that I'm way out of time here this morning. I want to thank you all for being here. Just another quick reminder, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Hit and Run Candlesticks trading room. I'd love to see you there. And I'd love to see you take a look at that 3-8 trap class that as i said is is pretty much giving you everything i got that built my career as a trader and if you have an interest i know times are tough i know money is hard right now to come by um, a lot of folks struggling here but this might be the class that uh, can turn your trading around and get you moving. Once again, for those of you that have taken the 3 a trap, if you could leave a brief comment on that so folks um, taking a, um, a look might have some inspiration. It's not just me talking, but there are other folks that have had success with that class. I want to wish you all the very, very best. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great day, everyone.